Hello, Sandy again for um, Spectrum Noir. Today I'm going to run through um, some quick techniques for you using the aqua markers that I think is quite funky um, to make quite a simple design. Um, so really quick for those um, invites or um, Mother's Day cards or things that you've forgotten um, rather than the intricate takes, takes days kind of um, marker colouring that we sometimes get drawn into. So this is a, a, a double layer stamping um, with a little bit of paper piecing. So I thought we'd run through um, this today and, and how we get these this blended edge that looks like distressing but it isn't, it's, actu it's actually aqua marker. This distress edge here isn't is would normally be achieved with um, a distressing but if you haven't got the right colour or at, to get the best out of your aqua markers value for money I'm going to show you a quick way that you can achieve that look okay so the double stamping um, you can do this on triple layer as well if you put if you put a third layer on same technique just add another layer um, so we're going to stick to the to the double layer um, so that we can match up the card that I've just shown you okay so we need two pieces of Sheena stamping card um, we need this piece is five and a half by five and a half for the card I've just shown you and this piece is two and a half inches by the five in and a half inches long um, and that's just so that I can get an even coating right so I'm just going to roughly put this in the middle um, I'm not really too precious about it being totally in the middle um, and I'm gonna choose a bit and I'm gonna just attach it to my um, desktop my glass mat so that it doesn't get too scrunched up and um, so I'm just gonna take tack off a little bit and then put it down there so obviously you won't be a stamp on those bits now I'm using a flower stamp here and you can use any flower stamp this one happens to be um, from a range an upcoming range from crafters companion and because we're going to be using um, the aqua markers um, we're going to use archival ink um, so any permanent solvent based ink because we don't want it to run so something that's that's um, what you would call the permanent inks. Okay, so we've got that down. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to start and we're just going to lay our flowers on. So we'll put the first one up there. I'm not going to do double prints um, because I want them to all be quite crisp so that we can see them. And now the first of our, make sure that our card's not going to move and we're going to do the first of the, the double prints. So we're hanging over the edge of the two and we're going to go down and just press really tight in the middle to make sure that you don't miss and you get as close up if you, as you can. But you don't have to worry if you don't because we're going to put an, um, a matte layer there. Okay, so we're going to do the same over here. Just that little bit of extra pressure in the middle. And we'll just keep going in that way so that we go all over as many as you want doesn't really matter um, whether you have more or less as long as you've got enough down the sides um, to show the difference for your paper pieced flowers in the center um, so we're just gonna as, as you can see from my mat I'm not massively precious about my craft area being tidy but hey ho crafting is way more important right so there you go so I've got um, a nice mix there um, of across there so now these while I've got the stamp out these pieces I'm going to match in go back to the original we're going to match in with some paper piecing so I'm going to use um, a paper, paper from Sarah's signature um, love collection this time. So I think I'll go for this lovely red spot. 
spots are good um, because you can have them in any um, direction so it doesn't matter as much so we're gonna gonna whiz this quickly and I need one two three I've got three hanging over the center so I'm gonna stamp three flowers onto Zara's paper there we go all done and that's all you that's all your stamping done okay so now we can take that off there we don't need that so before we cut these ones out what we need to do to these is to give them a little bit of depth so we're going to use I've got charcoal boulder and chestnut spectrum noirs um, because um, browns go really well um, with reds to use them as dark um, for the shadow so we're just going to go in just a little bit where we think the shadow should be so around the base of these external roses here and coming up the side there so we're just we're just adding shadow um, as you would with most of the colorings but it's just it's just touches really just to so that we can get a definition um, and then round in the center just a little bit there we go um, and that was chestnut so I'm just going to go in with um, boulder into the center because that boulder is a little bit darker and the paper will soak it a little um, and it will sort of snatch the ink you'll see it disappearing as it snatches at the ink and soaks it in but that's fine because we want it not floating around on the surface we want so this is not marker quality or waterproof paper this is you know this is standard um, patterned paper so what we're doing is we're getting some kind of definition here just so that we've got um, I'm not going to use the charcoal decided um, just so that we've got some we're boosting the flowers so that you can see them a little better on the patterned paper so hopefully you can see that Right, I'm only going to do one um, so that I can show you how this is how this is done. So there's so you can see it starting to come to life, and then what we need is to cut this out. And I'm not going to cheat because this is at this stamp is actually from um, an upcoming collection for with um, Crafter's Companion, and it actually comes with the die to cut it out. Um, but I'm not going to cheat and use the die. I am going to show you just how quick and easy you can be when you're paper piecing, fussy cutting, and I've got very shaky hands as you can see. So nice. The trick to this really is the scissors. You really want to get a, a really, really razor sharp pair of embroidery thread um, scissors so that they're, they're cut embroidery. Um, sharpness so it can cut the materials um, so we're just going to go around like this so these are very very sharp these ones I think are tonic and um, the ones I had before that um, lasted me years were Fiskars so there is quite a few brands out there of the razor sharp small scissors so we've got that all nice and cut out now so you can see how it's starting now to look like the flower um, and that is going to go over the top of one of these flowers we've got here as you can see we just piece that over the top and the same with this one over here that it pieces over the top so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick this one down just to show you some collar all purpose really quick and easy technique so we're just going to get some some glue on that and I only want to paper piece the ones that are on here so we'll do that and then we'll leave that to dry for a second so we'll go back to this and while we're waiting for that to dry I will quickly go around the others 
because I promised this one this video would be a super quick video. So we're not um I'm obviously you can take a lot more time with yours of picking out and you can go back to the original um, drawing um, of the stamp um, which will help guide you as to where the real darkest areas are because um, sometimes especially when you're doing it on pattern paper it is really hard to pick up exactly where those details should be um, so always keep the, the front printed sheets if you can so that you've got that as a reference especially when you're paper piecing so I'm just going to quickly do this around there while we're waiting for the other one to dry and just show you how well you quick and easy obviously you, obviously when you're not making a tutorial video you could do yours a little bit take a little bit more care but I think you'll probably get the the idea just from that from the little pieces that I've done um, it's like bolder and we'll just put a couple of really 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 dark bits in and it does as you'll see from um, the other one that I did it does dry the aqua markers do get drag pulled in to the papers so it will be slightly lighter when it's dry so don't panic which is what I, would, what I say on all of mine sorry I keep jocking my ring on the glass mat uh, that's what happens when you try very hard not to um, right so and again we just so we're just and again taking a bit more care this time how we can so we're just going to do exactly the same again. Whiz round. Whizzing round. Yeah, I'm trying to get it on very quickly and finding I'm going slower than I would normally. It's ridiculous. But anyway, I'm only going to do this. I'm not going to do the third one. I don't think I just wanted to get this one on so that you see how it starts to come together for the middle okay right so there's that one so we glue this one on as well and you just have to imagine what it looks like with the third one but we'll be all right so we're going to glue this one on I'm going to stick my cloth to my finger and then we'll glue that one just on there and you'll see now how this is starting to really really come together and the colour's going to really pop so what we're going to do is we're going to turn it over and obviously we're hanging over so we're going to get our scissors and just lop those two off like that and we don't need those and we'll chuck those over there so this is how it's going to look and then we're going to mat that um, and I always go by a quarter of an inch so we're going to mat that before we put it back on our central piece and that's what it's the continuation there the continuation there is perfect so it actually looks like we've got a, cent a continuation dropping down from here to there groovy right so now the other thing i did on this one is this distressing technique here um and i promised i'd do it with the apple markers so that's what we're going to do um i'll ignore that last one get my pen get my thing away right, de dirty desk really counts now so i'm going to use the um chestnut aqua marker to get the distress feeling going on so we're going to put put some down on our mat um, or on a piece of acetate, depending on how clean your craft room is today. Um, so we're going to do that, and then I just just get any old piece of metal. And what you'll need is some good old glycerin from um, a chemist store. 
um, because you can get a big bottle if you cake decorating as well but if you get it from the cake place you'll only get a tiny one so get a big bottle of glycerine is what you need and you need some cut and dry foam so we only we literally only need a couple of a couple of drops of this and I'm hoping you can see that so there so I'm, it's just a ball tool from um, embossing because it comes straight off um, and I've literally just got two tiny drops of glycerine on the craft desk and then we're going to use a piece of cut and dry foam and this is the same piece I used last time I just put it away and put it in a box so we've got, got our little piece of cut and dry foam and what we're going to do is we're going to dock that into the glycerin and soak all of that up and we're just going to push push that glycerin into the sponge and it's still got a little bit from last time so and then we're going to get a little bit of water move that out of the way because I will get it everywhere and just spray that ink so we've made it wetter than it was um, and now we're going to go in and we're going to take a little bit of that ink at a time and just dab 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 dab, dab, dab the sponge so that we're soaking up that colour into our sponge I mean, it really is as simple as that you'll see it starting to go up with the glycerin and then we're going to get our piece of card and so we hold our sponge on on an angle um, so that we don't get any lines but one so but as you start to go on you'll see exactly how smooth and easy that's going on just like distress ink we can and you can see that you can come right down if you want to, right across the card. And you'll see exactly how beautifully that actually covers. Um, and I, 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 I really, it's much smoother blend than um, sometimes you get with the um, Distress Inks. I actually think this, this looks so much more um, subtle and more like a mist um, which is an absolute brilliant effect that I haven't been able to achieve with my distress inks that I've been using for years and because we're doing this it's, it's yet another use for your apple markers um, our craft supplies aren't cheap so we want to be getting as much benefit as we can from them so hopefully you've seen that this is a, a great way of getting more from your echo markers and there we go that's if I put that just over the top you'll see that I've lined up the um, the distress inking um, line across here and that's exactly how you'll achieve a fabulous distress ink technique but using some good old glycerin and one brown aqua marker. Um, so if we go back to the original, so we'll go back right back to the beginning, you'll see it's exactly the same technique that I used here. Um, and again, paper piece. Um, the only difference is that I raised one of one of these up on foam, um, foam pads or 3D gel so that it's got that little bit of height. Um, the card itself, I, I gave it a square with a tag end, so the card actually bends there. Um, but I will put the details up, just matte and layer it um, onto a card. And it's a fabulous shaded, fabulous shaded technique. So I hope you like that, and I will be back very soon um, with another video for Spectral Noir. It's Santa.